Welcome to Plumbing School, and this is how you thread steel pipe using traditional hand dies. Some of you may be asking, why would anyone want to thread steel pipe by hand? Well, there are several reasons. First and foremost, for smaller or infrequent applications requiring the fabrication of threaded piping, a manual threader is significantly simpler and more cost effective than having to purchase an electric power threader, such as the timeless rigid 300 power vise, which can run you several thousand dollars compared to a decent set of ratcheting hand dies, which can be purchased for only a fraction of the cost. Also, unlike an electric power vise, hand threading requires no power or external energy source, other than your very own elbow grease and sheer determination. As an added bonus, you'll get a free bicep-tricep workout in the process, which is actually how I managed to get my arm in this ripped condition. You, uh, believe me, right? Anyway, moving on. Also, if your intention is only to make a few threads, it's a lot easier to throw a ratchet threader into your vehicle than it is to have to lug around a heavy power vise and all its respective components. Another advantage of hand dies is that they allow you to thread existing installed piping in place, such as existing gas, water, or heating pipe runs suspended from mechanical room ceilings. With all that said, it's important to note, however, that if you intend to thread pipe on a regular basis or even for a single large-scale project, Investing in a full-fledged power threader may be a smart and ultimately cost-effective decision. If you'd like to see power threading in action, please do check out my video. To be able to hand thread, we're going to need a few critical items, namely a die head ratchet with die heads appropriate for the size of pipe you'll be threading. Today we'll be demonstrating with a rigid 00R ratchet and dies, which is capable of threading sizes ranging from 1 of an inch to 1 inch nominal pipe size. Unless you're threading existing piping in place, you'll require some sort of vise to hold the pipe still so the pipe doesn't spin on you, otherwise known as counterforce. I'm a fan of the rigid 425 portable tri-stand vise, which is capable of securing up to two inch nominal pipe size. You'll also need cutting oil, which will not only help you produce optimal threads, but will help maintain the life of your costly and precious dyes. If you don't have access to an oiler, you can always opt for a simple one liter bottle, which can be squeezed onto your threads as you work. Be sure to place something beneath the work area to collect the metal shavings and dripping oil, such as a bucket or a drain pan. And where there is oil, there is mess. As such, be sure to have plenty of clean rags on hand, as well as an abundance of cardboard or tarps splayed out generously beneath the footprint of your work area to help protect the floor surfaces you're working on, such as this exquisite shag carpeting. Hey, it could happen. Yeah, baby! And finally, if you're threading, you'll likely also be installing pipe fittings. Therefore, you may want to have on hand a pipe wrench, a pipe reamer for removing burrs, as well as pipe dope or Teflon tape to help create a watertight joint. So let's get started. Before we can start threading, we're gonna check out our ratchet threader to ensure that the appropriate size die assembly is inserted into the ratchet housing. Note that these particular dies are fixed for a certain size and cannot be adjusted to accommodate other sizes. In this case, we're going to be utilizing three quarter inch nominal pipe size dies. In order to insert or remove the die assembly from the housing, lift the knob with the arrow and turn it so that the arrow is facing either direction to the side of the handle. This places it in a neutral position. Then take the smaller diameter size of the die assembly and insert it into the ratchet housing. To lock the assembly into place, simply turn the knob until it drops and locks into place. Note that the direction the arrow is facing refers to the locked or unratcheted direction when rotating the handle. Because we're fabricating right hand threads, you'll want the ratchet to lock when you rotate the handle in a clockwise direction as viewed when facing the pipe end. For added flexibility, you may insert the die assembly on the opposite side of the ratchet as well. What really matters most is that the knob's arrow points toward the direction you are threading. So, we're going to uh, place our three quarter inch pipe on our pipe vise. We're gonna wrap a chain around it, make sure that this is fully open. And we wrap our chain and it's gonna lock into place on the opposite side. And we proceed to turn the handle. leaving about four inches or so outwards. If the pipe is too close against the jaws of the pipe vise, then um, you're, you're gonna be getting interference when you place your hand dies. 
So we have our oil ready. We have our pipe locked in place. We've placed our three quarter inch die into our ratchet and I think we're good to go. So in order to do so, you will not place the side that's showing, you will not place the side that's showing the three quarter inch symbol on it where you can actually see the hand dies. You'll be slipping the side that looks sort of bare, there's nothing there. That's what will be, uh, that's how we'll be engaging threading the pipe. Now, we're going to be threading in a clockwise fashion. We can start it by applying a little bit of pressure and pushing against the pipe wall. Pushing against the face of the pipe. Now, depending on how this pipe was cut, you may end up with burrs along the edge of the pipe and that may make it difficult for the cutting dies to catch on to the pipe. So you may need to deburr it ahead of time. So once we get it started, it's important, just like when power threading, it's important to apply some cutting oil. Remember, you can never have too much cutting oil. Now you will be making a bit of a mess What cutting oil allows you to do is keep the dies cool and allow you to maintain a good thread. Now, if your dies are good and not worn, you will end up you will end up catching on, provided that you have no burrs on the pipe. Now, I'm threading and pulling in an upward position here, and mostly for the purpose of allowing you to see via the camera and the angle I'm at right now. But realistically, it would make more sense to push downward. It would give me more leverage because I'll be pushing against the ground. But for these purposes, I'm gonna be threading in an upward direction, just so you can see it a little bit better with the camera. Never have too much cutting oil. So you could do about a half a turn or a full turn, apply cutting oil. If you don't have an oiler, remember you can always use, either buy an oiler from a local um, hardware store, or just buy a one liter bottle from your plumbing supplier and that has a little spout at the end that will allow you to control the output of the oil in a, that will allow you to spill out the oil in a controlled fashion. So as you can see, this process takes significantly longer than it does, than it does power threading. But not every situation allows for the luxury of power threading because power threaders are rather expensive and they're cumbersome, difficult to transport compared to say a simple thread of hand dies and if you only need to make a few joints it doesn't make sense to bring along an entire power threader when this will suffice so we're almost there and you'll see that this area around the hand die starts to fill in with the, uh, with the shavings, if you will, of your threaded pipe. So how do we know when we're done? Okay, one way to know when you're done is when the number four, or the furthest out hand die, is just past, say, the outer edge of the pipe. And we're not too far off, we're just about done. Have a 
look. It's also a good idea to make sure that you're wearing gloves because these shards are quite sharp. And I think we're just about done. Now, when you have reached the end, what you will do is pull that little plunger and reverse it so that the arrow is facing the opposite direction. And now it will ratchet this way, the same direction we were using to actually cut into the pipe. But now we're actually reversing direction to unscrew the hand die from the pipe. Now, the more you unscrew it, the looser it will become to the point where you can actually turn it manually. And there's our thread. Proceed to grab your rag, clean everything off nicely. Now, one issue we will have is that depending on how you cut your pipe, you'll have burrs inside the pipe. You will want to remove these burrs. One way to do that is to use a proper deburring tool, namely, such as this little rigid deburring tool. And it has a female end to accommodate the outer burrs, and it's got a little conical male end to accommodate the inner burrs of the pipe. So we just proceed to enter the conical side, and we give it a few twists. Outer side. And uh, this is a matter of preference. Some people prefer to actually deburr it ahead of time before you thread. It might make sense to do so um, because it, it will help with having your hand dies catch on to the pipe. If you have burrs on the outside from the way you cut the pipe, um, you may have difficulty with the hand dies catching on. And there's our pipe. Now, unlike universal hand dies that are found on the rigid uh, pi uh, power vise, these hand dies are not adjustable. Okay, they come in specific sizes. In this case, we have three quarter inch. And they either thread well or they don't. Now, if you have difficulty threading or the thread's not coming out properly, uh, what sometimes ends up happening, this face ends up loosening up and debris gets caught inside in between the body of the die and the face that holds everything together. In that event, what you do is simply remove these four screws, clean out the area that might have the, uh, the fending material, put everything back, and provided that your hand dies are still in good condition, you should be, done, you should be able to uh, make new threads without issue. Once your pipe is cleaned, simply take a fitting of the same diameter pipe and try and screw it on by hand. If you get a few full turns, two to three full turns, that means you have a decent thread. If it doesn't turn enough, well, something's wrong with your hand dies, or if it actually turns too many times, five or six times, then it's too loose and you run the risk of having your thread bottom out into your fitting when you begin to actually tighten. Now, one of the benefits of having this configuration is that you can actually proceed with tightening your fittings utilizing a standard pipe wrench. So now what you can do, once you have your thread made, uh, one of the benefits of having this configuration that it actually allows you to tighten fittings in place. So then you can proceed to remove it from the pipe vise and install it wherever you need to install it. So when applying pipe dough, be sure to apply pipe dough to the outer threads only. Do not apply to the fitting, the inner threads of the fitting, or inside the pipe because that's just gonna cause you to get all that yucky stuff inside the system, which is never good, okay? You don't need much pipe dough, just enough to fill the threads. And again, this is also a matter of preference and depending on the health of your threads, uh, some people might wanna opt for Teflon tape. The issue with Teflon tape is that it's more time consuming and more expensive if you're doing many, many threads. So pipe dope often suffices if it's a good thread uh, you should be able to have minimal leakage without anything on it. So pipe dope will only help to seal that leaking. So once we apply our pipe dope, 
we proceed to manually screw our fitting on as far as it'll go. And we'll take our trusty pipe wrench and proceed to tighten until it's snug enough. I'm tightening in an upward direction merely for sake of showing the camera in this case, but realistically, it would make sense to tighten this way. Downward. So this way, I'm applying pressure toward the ground. Ground's not going anywhere, okay? If I'm tightening upward, well, I don't have the same stability and leverage. So realistically, this is the proper way to be tightening. Same way if when, you're, when you're threading your pipe, downward. That will give you optimal leverage. Okay, so once your pipe is tight, to the fitting, we proceed to take our trusty old rag and we're done. And so that's how you thread steel pipe using manual hand dies. If you like this video, please plunge that like button and be sure to subscribe to Plumbing's Cool. I thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.